So now we will hear from Professor Yun Ho Kim at the Department of Mathematical Sciences. He will share his experience in teaching math class in the last semester. Professor Kim, if you're ready, please start. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Yun Ho Kim, a math professor at UNIST. I'm so glad to be part of this workshop and I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to share with you uh, the, the online math lecture experiences that math faculty at UNIST had in the previous semester. So when it comes to math teaching, especially uh, online math teaching, we are concerned about the following three things. The first is how to boost students' critical thinking. And the second is how to encourage online discussion. And the third is how to evaluate students' achievements. So especially quizzes and exams. And it was fortunate that uh, math faculty and UNIST has been involved in similar situations to online uh, lectures in the past. As a matter of fact, uh, about one third of the faculty has been managing the flipped learning calculus courses for the UNIST freshmen in the past few years. And also about uh, four professors, which is another one third of the faculty, participated in uh, the STAR MOOC project to develop one comprehensive online class covering various topics of mathematics that are hardly discussed in regular uh, math courses in detail, hoping that we could one day um, use this material as a, as a supplementary for other fundamental math courses. Now, I would like to share uh, with you two uh, specific methods that we implemented in the past uh, semester. The first is basically the same as in classroom math lecture. Uh, this is more appropriate for small classes than large classes because we basically prepare a blank page on a tablet PC and we simply explain the course material by writing on this blank page and discussing with the students. It requires the same teaching techniques and also writing is easy, erasing the page or board is much easier. And also it was possible to ask individual students direct questions because we implemented this method for small classes so we had all the students on the screen so we can ask, we can actually designate one, one student to ask certain questions. So it's good uh, for monitoring individual students' attention. But as usual, it's possible to be distracted from the prefer, uh, prepared lectures. But this is not a downside because when teaching mathematics, we are not uh, concerned about delivering the the, the, the material from the textbook to students. We are basically concerned about training students to be able to come up with new mathematical insights or ideas and to put them together to tackle mathematical problems. So for this purpose, being direct, uh, distracted from the pre prepared lectures is not a downside. But again, this method is the most convenient that probably every math faculty member is used to. And the second is to pre prepare a lecture note in advance for sharing. So this is one typical slide that we use uh, for a class. So basically what we do is we write down uh, theorems, statements of theorems and remarks and definitions and we leave some part of the page blank so that students can expect what to be discussed in the next lecture. So as you can see on the slide, what's written in red is something that we write during an online lecture and discuss with students what needs to be discussed. And uh, this approach is probably better for large classes than the first one because 
In the first one, it, as I mentioned, it, it was possible to be distracted from the pre, uh, prepared lectures, but because we al already provided, provided an outline on the lecture note, so as you can uh, give a lecture, we can follow the steps and the lectures are given as prepared. And also, uh, in this approach, students can take a look at the note in advance and they have some sense of what will be discussed in the next course, so they get to prepare certain questions to ask. Sometimes we had some questions about typos on the lecture note or some errors, even errors, in the lecture note, or sometimes students ask, asked certain related questions, possibly some mathematical extension of the material. So such, uh, such a discussion led to some fruitful um, results uh, through this online uh, lecture. And also in this way, we can use various um, teaching support by sharing the screen using some applications on the computer. And so when we need, for instance, some extra uh, space to uh, explain further, we can, for instance, open up an application like this and write down further ideas or further um, uh, initiate some further uh, discussions. Of course, uh, it requires more time to prepare each uh, lecture than the usual conventional way of in-classroom teaching. But once we have uh, everything set, this material can be reusable for the next year or some, for some other courses. So um, in that sense, taking some extra time for prepa preparation is not also uh, a downside. And as for quizzes and exams, we had certain concerns and also we had some issues in the previous semester. And we uh, had some option to pre uh, provide students with uh, online live quizzes like this. So basically we open up an application and we write down in quiz problems and we tell the student, students when to start this uh, solving this quiz problem and when to end and also how to upload their uh, solutions to the system. And then we grade those uh, quizzes. And we are still concerned about how to um, fairly evaluate students uh, through exams. So, I mean, that's also something that we need uh, further considerations. So to sum up, so it's very easy in some sense to prepare various types of lectures in this online math teaching. One of the things that students uh, think mathematics is difficult is because most of the things that students learn in mathematics are some abstraction, not um, something, that, something that students can see or uh, touch. So uh, uh, with the aid of uh, technology, we can visualize certain mathematical objects and such visualization, visualization definitely helps students to understand abstraction better. And also, unlike uh, the, the in-classroom teaching, we have unlimited amount of writing space, so we can easily write things and to share with students. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, we need extra time to prepare uh, decent and quality lectures. And this is also one example. So one professor uh, who I believe uh, taught uh, the method of applied mathematics, he shared with students some theory. So he wrote down uh, necessary theoretical results and some computations on the screen. And then he also opened up a new application to show students how some things are connected. Some things are connected in the theory. So he used uh, this uh, pro program to show student, students how to code, how to write their own algorithms to solve some uh, applied math problems.
And when it comes to communication with students, we observed that many students participated in uh, after-class discussion. Uh, usually, uh, in, in, uh, before the pandemic, we had certain such uh, discussion after each class, but students hurried to the next class, so we didn't have much time to discuss uh, with each other. But this time, uh, students didn't have to hurry to the next class, so probably that's the reason why students uh, stayed even after uh, each class, each lecture, uh, to further discuss the matters that they have. And also, it, is easy, it was easy to monitor students' attention to lectures, uh, mostly for small classes. When the class size is large, it's little, literally impossible to monitor students' attention. So we need some uh, extra or other ideas to implement uh, this kind of monitoring uh, uh, process. And sharing a lecture note in advance definitely prepared the students. We observed that students were ready uh, to participate in class discussion. Uh, it was uh, highly encouraging because that was something that we, exper we, we, we tried in the past to have students prepared. But in this uh, situation, we, we observed uh, students participation. And one of the important things that we need to consider is how to hold office hours uh, in probably in the next semester. In the previous semester, we didn't have much time to hold office hours, and we didn't know how to hold office hours offline or online. Of course, the offline was not uh, desir uh, desirable, so we had to come up with some ideas to hold office hours online, but it was quite difficult. So we need definitely an idea to hold office hours so that students can uh, come to uh, professors or other TAs to ask certain specific quest math questions. And related to this is uh, limited interaction, interaction. We need uh, more interactive methods other than typing questions. As a professor, I, I had all the tools that I needed to deliver the material, even questions to stu students. But from the student side, they didn't have enough tools to ask questions, especially uh, equation-related questions. They can, all they had was uh, the typing keyboard. So we need to think about how to um, in, enhance or encourage such uh, interactive uh, communication during online lectures. And also further consideration is uh, to be focused on uh, the class size. So small classes of about 10 to 30 students or large classes of more than 80 students. As for small classes, such as math major uh, courses, we didn't have much problem in managing student, students and monitoring students, but for large class courses such as calculus, uh, differential equations, and applied linear algebra, we had some trouble monitoring students' uh, achievements in the, um, student, uh, uh, student uh, studying material. So we need some better ideas to manage large class uh, math courses. And one of the important things for uh, large classes is to have TAs ready for online recitation session because students learn from regular, course, regular uh, lectures the, the theory, the, the fundamental theories, but they had to practice for themselves uh, lots of new ideas or new problems to get used to such mathematical theories. But for small classes, we have enough um, faculty or TAs to manage such sessions. But for large classes like calculus or differential equations or applied linear algebra, we need better ideas for uh, managing such online recitation sessions. And from the flipped learning uh, calculus course, I 
I believe that we have something uh, to learn from. So basically, this is one of the slides that we provide students with in advance so that stu students can take a look at this slide before coming to class. And they, um, in the classroom, they get to see what is really needed to understand this particular example. And in the previous semester, we take the same idea from the flipped learning calculus course into the online math lectures. So we, in, in addition to such slides, we added extra slides uh, to show students the, the ways of solving each uh, problem or each understanding each example, so line by line. So we don't prefer writing everything down on one page because that makes students busy reading the whole page. So it's better to provide them with line by line guidelines uh, for understanding uh, each example or or uh, theorem or result, mathematical results. And let me just skip to the last page. So one thing that we can learn from the flipped learning uh, lecture framework is that we can prepare students for each lecture in advance and then class discussion leads better understanding. And this philosophy can be easily applicable to, we believe, other mathematics courses without course redesigning into the flipped learning framework. And I believe and we believe that this is more appropriate for training students with mathematical ideas from great thinkers. And we hope to implement better ways of online math lectures in the next semester. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, uh, Professor Kim, uh, for sharing your teaching experiences today. And I think uh, he, you know, did not only talk about um, experiences of how you know he handled math class online, but also some challenges that he faced. And I think that's probably what a lot of uh, you know professors have experienced as well, and then try to solve that problem together. So in that sense, I think it was a really good presentation uh, to share with.